What is Zion and what is steel and how are they produced? Hey, engineering fans, my name is Gustavo Pereira. And have you ever wondered how people refine iron and steel? You've probably heard of iron ore, but how do we turn a pile of dirt into a set of stainless steel surgical instruments or a locomotive? If you had to name the technologies that have had the greatest impact on modern society, the refining of the heavy metallic element iron would have to be near the top. Iron makes up a huge variety of modern products, especially the carbon-rich commercial iron that we call steel. Cars, tractors, bridges, trains, tools, skyscrapers, weapons, and many other items rely on iron and steel to make them strong. Iron is so important that primitive societies are measured by the point at which they learn to refine it. That's where the term Iron Age comes from. Iron is an incredibly useful element, extremely strong and at the same time malleable. If properly heated, iron is also relatively easy to shape into various forms, as well as refine using simple tools. And speaking of those tools, unlike wood, iron can withstand high temperatures without catching fire, making it useful for tasks that require working with high temperatures. Unlike most elements, you can also magnetize iron, making it useful in the creation of motors and electric generators. And finally, there's certainly no shortage of iron to worry about. The Earth's crust is 5% iron, and in some areas, the element is concentrated in ores that contain up to 70% iron. Iron is very important to the history of humanity, as it can be extracted with relative ease using tools that were available in primitive societies. There will probably come a day when humans become so technologically advanced that iron will be completely replaced by aluminum, plastics, and things like carbon and fiberglass. But for now, the economic equation gives iron and cheap steels a huge advantage over these more expensive alternatives. Humans have invented countless uses for iron, from carpentry tools and cooking equipment to complicated machines and spacecraft. But before iron can be used for any of these purposes, it needs to be extracted from the ground. Before many ancient civilizations began transitioning from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, some toolmakers were already creating iron implements from a cosmic source, meteorites. Called black copper by the Egyptians, meteoric iron is not the kind of substance found in huge consolidated deposits. Instead, craftsmen found pieces of it scattered over great distances. Most of the Earth's iron, however, exists in iron ore, which is extracted directly from the ground. The raw ore is a mixture of actual ore and loose earth. The actual ore can usually be separated by crushing the raw ore and simply washing away the lighter soil. Breaking down the actual ore is more difficult, since it is a chemical compound of carbonates, hydrates, oxides, silicates, sulfides, and various impurities. To get to the pieces of iron in the ore, you have to melt it. Smelting involves heating the ore until the metal becomes spongy and the chemical compounds in the ore begin to break down. More importantly, it releases oxygen from the iron ore, which makes up a high percentage of common ores. The most primitive facility used to smelt iron is a forge. In it, a blacksmith burns charcoal with iron ores and a good supply of oxygen provided by a bellows or blower. Charcoal is essentially pure carbon. Carbon combines with oxygen to create carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, which releases a lot of heat in the process. The carbon and carbon monoxide combine with the oxygen from the iron ore and take it away, leaving only the ferrous metal. But in a forge, the fire doesn't get hot enough to completely melt the iron. Instead, the iron heats up into a spongy mass containing iron and silicates from the ore. Heating and hammering this mass forces the impurities out and mixes the glassy silicates into the iron metal 
creating wrought iron. Wrought iron is strong and easy to work with, making it perfect for creating tools. Tool and weapon makers learned to smell copper long before iron became the dominant material. Archaeological evidence suggests that blacksmiths in the Middle East were smelting iron as early as 2500 years before Christ, although it took more than a thousand years for iron to become the dominant metal in the region. But to create higher qualities of iron, blacksmiths needed better furnaces. The technology gradually developed over the centuries. By the mid-13th century, Taller furnaces and manually operated bellows allowed European furnaces to burn hot enough, not only to soften iron, but to melt it. Today, the most advanced way to smelt iron is in a blast furnace. A blast furnace is loaded with iron ore, charcoal or coke and limestone. Large amounts of air are blown into the bottom of the furnace and the calcium from the limestone combines with the silicates to form slag. The molten iron accumulates at the bottom of the blast furnace above this layer of slag. Then, periodically, the molten iron is allowed to flow out and cool. At this point, the molten iron usually flows through a channel or molds made of sand. Once it cools, this metal is known as pig iron. The basic recipe to create a ton of pig iron, you would need two tons of ore, one ton of coke and half a ton of limestone. The temperature at the center of the blast furnace can reach about 1600 degrees Celsius. This pig iron contains 4 to 5 percent carbon and is so hard and brittle that it's almost useless. If you want to do anything with it, you have three options. First, you can melt it, mix it with slag and hammer it to remove most of the carbon and create wrought iron, which is strong and malleable. The second option is to melt the pig iron and combine it with scrap, remove impurities and add alloys to form cast iron. This metal contains 2 to 4% carbon, along with amounts of silicon, manganese and traces of impurities. Cast iron, as the name suggests, is usually poured into molds to form a wide variety of parts and products. The third option for pig iron is to take the refining process even further and create steel. Steel is iron that has most of its impurities removed. Steel also has a consistent carbon concentration from 0.5% to 1.5%. Impurities like silica, phosphorus and sulfur greatly weaken steel. That's why they must be eliminated. The advantage of steel over iron is its strength. The open hearth furnace is a way to create steel from pig iron. Pig iron, limestone and iron ore go into an open hearth furnace and are heated to around 871 degrees Celsius. With this, the limestone and ore form a slag which floats on the surface. The impurities, including carbon, are oxidized and move from the iron to the slag. When the carbon content is right, you have carbon steel. A variety of metals can be alloyed with the steel at this point to create different properties. For example, adding 10 to 30% chromium creates stainless steel, which is very resistant to rust. Combining chromium and molybdenum creates chrome molybdenum steel, which is strong and lightweight. Adding niobium creates ferroniobium, which is extremely light and strong and used in a wide range of applications. And if you want to know more, there's a video in a card at the end of this video. Can you imagine your life today without steel? Have you noticed how many items in our daily lives use this material? Leave it here in the comments, I want to know. I'll leave two related videos here that you might like, so be sure to check them out. This is your moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. That's all friends, big hug, see you next video.